بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف Alhamdulillah, we have to feel to have some sessions in this holy month on the Quranic concepts which are very fundamental, very important. So it's a kind of interpretation of the Quran, but not from beginning to the end of a surah it's a kind of what we call thematic tafsir kind of tafsir mawdu'i inshallah so we try to study some of the important concepts the concept that we start with and it may take a few sessions is the concept of life hayat and this is a very fundamental concept inshallah it will become clear that this is something that it is used for Allah Himself. Allah is described as being the living Al Hay. This is used for creatures of Allah who have life. And from a Quranic perspective, indeed, every creature has a life. And then it's also used for a spiritual life, for hayat al mm. And it is also used for life in the hereafter. So everything can be explained through this concept. Inshallah, we will explore it more gradually. So the first thing that I would like to mention is the fact that in Islam, and in other Abrahamic religions, God has different attributes, what we call different sifat. And all these Abrahamic religions share this idea that God is the living, God is Al Hay. We have a discussion in Al Mikalam whether we are permitted to use concepts that we think they are all right for God or not. Whether asma'ullah or tawqifi or not, means whether we can just use what has been mentioned in the Quran or Hadith, or we can use other things as well. For example, in the Quran and Hadith, we may not have, certainly not in the Quran, certainly not in the famous Hadith, and maybe no Hadith. Uh, any case that God is described as wajibul wujud. Yeah, we don't have in the Quran and in Hadith, of course, no one can say no Hadith at all because there are tens of thousands of Hadith, but there seems to be no Hadith also, which says God is wajibul wujud, is necessary being. But Muslim philosophers, Muslim theologians use it for God because there is nothing wrong in this and actually this helps uh, us with many aspects of creation. Or for example, the prime mover, the first mover, this is not maybe used in the scriptures, but it can be used. Some people used to say, no, we sh should not use anything, but in the Shia theology, we say, if you are sure that this concept would not bring imperfection to God, would not bring some kind of physical uh, nature to God, you can use it. But if something is used by Allah himself in the scripture, certainly that is more significant. Al-Hay is something that 
Allah has used himself in the Quran for his own description. So it's not what a philosopher has said or what a mystic has said. This is what Allah has used in the Quran five times for himself. Sometimes Allah uses al hay right after Tawheed. For example, in Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum. So after Tawheed, the first thing which is mentioned here is al hay Because if God has no life, if na'udhu billah is God is dead, how can he be running this world? The relation between God and the world is not like a builder and building. A builder may build a building and then die. Yes, they can bury him actually next to his building. Building, building continues. But builder is not creator of the building. Builder is using materials which are there and gives a new design. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just giving design to materials that someone else has created. He continuously is giving existence to this world. So if for any moment you separate Allah from this world, this world is nothing. You don't need to destroy the world, the world is nothing. <laughs> yeah? It's not that God needs to destroy the world. Like for example, if in your mind you think of a building, okay, imagine a building, a house in your mind. This can only exist as long as you want it. If you don't want it or if your attention is diverted to something else, it disappears. You don't need to go and, you know, bring some labor and say, you know, we want to destroy this house. It's just finished. So, because God is continuously creating and continuously maintaining and continuously sustaining this world, he has to be al hay. He has to be living. Yes. Even Quran says, God cannot sleep because sometimes we are alive, but we are sleeping. To sleep is like to be somehow like dying <laughs> because inshallah we will explain this. What happens when we sleep is that our soul partially is taken away. Therefore, the management of the body by soul is reduced to the minimum. If you are sleeping and something happens around you, you don't understand. Yeah? So, Quran says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum la ta'akhuduhu sinatun wa la nawmun. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't also become sleepy. You know, they say when you are sleepy, don't drive. You are not dead, you are not asleep, but you are sleepy. You don't have enough attention. Imagine if God was sleepy. <laughs> How can he then look after this world? So, he is living al hay Also, Quran says in Surah Al Imran, this was Ayatul Kursi in Surah Al Baqarah, verse 252. In Surah Al Imran, verse 2, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. Again, very similar to Ayatul Kursi. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. In Surah Taha, verse 111, Wa'anat al wujuhu lil hayyul qayyum. All faces are humble before. Allah who is the living, who is Qayyum. Qayyum means someone who is standing and makes other things able to stand. 
he doesn't need any help and indeed he is helping others to be able to stand this is Qayyum so these are three cases then it is interesting that sometimes even it is mentioned before Tawheed in Surah Mu'min verse 65 huwa al-hayy la ilaha illa hu fad'uhu mukhlisina lahu al-deen alhamdulillahi rabbil why it comes before Tawheed? Because what is Tawheed? Tawheed means there is only one God. Of course, Tawheed has different aspects, but means one God. So first you have to understand who is God, and then you can say there is one God. God who has no life. Why we should bother whether it is one or two or three? <laughs> this is not God if he has no life. Yeah? So God has a life. Huwa al-hayy la ilaha illa hu. In Surah Al-Furqan verse 58 Allah says wa tawakkal 'ala al-hayy alladhi la yamut. You can put your trust only in someone who is high. Yeah, I cannot put my trust in someone who is dead. Some people say why you, for example, do ziyara or do tawassul to someone who is dead? We say we never do that. So you go to this chair and say they are not dead. We never ask someone who is dead to help us. We ask people who are more living than us. Yeah? If now I am, you know, living and I am alhamdulillah not sleepy I have attention but how many people now I can talk to I can only talk to one two three people you know if they want to communicate to me I cannot pay attention to few people who are talking to me at the same time but they are in a position that we say when you go to ziyar of Imam Raza ashhadu annaka tashhadu maqami so if there are tens of thousands of people, he knows everyone who is there. Tashhadu maqam wa tasma'u kalami. Someone speaks Urdu, someone speaks Pashto, someone speaks Farsi, someone Arabic, Spanish. Tasma'u kalami wa taruddu salami. So we are dead or they are dead. I think we are dead. <laughs> Compared to them, we are dead. We have very basic level of life. Very basic. This is why Quran says, "Inna dar al akhirah lahi al hayawan." Hayawan is life. The real life is there. Here is very, you know, a small, you know, a scale of life. So we never ask dead people to help us. We cannot put our trust in dead person. Allah says, Tawakkal ala al hajj alladhi la yamut. Wa sabbih bihamdihi wa kafa bihi bi dhunub ibadihi khabira. He knows everything we do. If we do something good or bad, he knows. He is not. You know, dead na'uzu billah, he is not sleeping, he is aware of everything. So, five times in the Quran, Al-Hay is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a fundamental quality. It comes before Tawheed or after Tawheed. It's not something that we mention at the end of the list. It's very important. In Dua Yujoshan Kabir, it's very beautiful dua, full of beautiful points, concepts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the paragraph 70, you see there are 10 names of Allah, attributes of Allah. All of them are related to life. Normally, 
those 10 are related to each other, but they are not focusing on one concept. Rarely you find a paragraph, all paragraph about one concept, like this or about Noor. For example, this para paragraph about Noor is all about Noor. Here is all about life. Ya hayyan qabla kulli hay. He is the one who has life, but before, N not before in time, before in order, because Allah has no time. You cannot say Allah is older than other living beings. He's not older. There is no new or old applicable to him. Yeah. So he is outside time framework. So his priority to every living being is in order because everyone receives life from him. Ya hayyan qabla kulli hay, ya hayyan ba'da kulli hay. Ya hayyu allazi laysa kamithlihi hay. There is no hay like him. Every other living being they need sustenance. Yeah? Every living being needs rest. Apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives rizq. <laughs> Even martyrs, we say they are high, but they need rizq. <laughs> if Allah doesn't give them rizq, they cannot continue their life. Even angels need rizq. Ta'amhum <laughs> tasbih. So, every living being is dependent, they need rizq. But Allah doesn't need anything. His life is not similar to any life. Like his knowledge, his knowledge is not similar to any knowledge. In general, Quran says, shay. So, Ya hayyu alladhi laysa kamithlihi hay. Ya hayyu alladhi la yusharikuhu hay. No one shares with Allah his life. It's not that Allah has a counterpart, as a similar, you know, like, you know, we have lots of human beings. They share human life. Yeah? But Allah has no one to be partner. Ya hayyu alladhi la yahtaju ila hay. He doesn't need anyone else to have. Ya hayyu alladhi yumitu kulla hay. Every living being receives life from Allah and he can only take away life. Huwa alladhi yuhyi wa yumit. Inshallah we'll talk about it. Namrud wanted to cheat. Inshallah we'll explain. He said, you know, I also can give life and, you know, take away life. But it's not possible. Only Allah can give life or take away life. We may have some role, but we are just part of cause and we are small part. If we want and Allah doesn't want, we cannot, you know, create anything. Even we cannot create a flower. And on the other hand, if all people want to kill someone, if Allah doesn't want, they cannot. Like Ibrahim alayhi salam. Inshallah, we'll talk about it. So, Ya Hayyu Alladhi Yumitu Kulla Hay, Ya Hayyu Alladhi Yarzuqu Kulla Hay, Ya Hayyan Lam Yarith Al Hayat Min Hay. Any living being must receive life from a previous living being. A child is preceded by parents. A tree, a flower, an animal, an insect. A cell, always they receive life from a previous living being. But Allah has not received life from anyone. Ya hayyu alladhi yuhyi al-mawta. He's the one who revives the dead. Ya hayyu ya qayyum la ta'khuduhu sanatun wa la This is 
paragraph 70 of Du'a'ya Jawshan'a Kabir. In Du'a'ya Ahd, again the concept of life is there. We say, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi wajhika al-munir wa bi nur wajhika al-munir wa mulkika al-qadim ya hayyu ya qayyum as'aluka bi ismika allazi ashraqat bihi as-samawat wal ardun wa bi ismika allazi yaslahu bihi al-awwalun wal akhirun ya hayyan qabla kull hayy ويا حيا بعد كل حي يا حيا هنا لا حي when there is no other living being he was living يا محيا الموتى ومميت الأحياء يا حي لا إله إلا أنت دعاء أحد and you know there is a special connection between Imam Mahdi and Jalallahu Taala Faraj Al Sharif. And life. Imam Mahdi is Ainul Hayat. He's the spring of life. We have seen a spring as a season when all the trees, all the flowers, you know, get a new life. Inshallah, you will see a spring of humanity Inshallah. when Imam Mahdi comes. <laughs> you see how they bear fruits, how virtues come out, how knowledge comes, how love comes, peace, solidarity. We need that spring of Hayat to come, Inshallah. So, in Quran, in du'as, in our hadith, the concept of al hay is very frequently used and applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very fundamental and we cannot think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without thinking of his life another thing that we understand from the Quran is that he is the giver of life and the one who takes away life no one else can do this yes he may delegate some power to some of his servants to do this for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Isa ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa salam power to revive the dead but he was not doing this independently. Isa was able to create a statue of a bird and blow into it and with that give life to the statue. In Farsi, we say he had Dame Masihai. He's blowing. We say blowing of Jesus means when someone can bring life, we say this person has Dame Masihai. So maybe in Urdu also. Yes. Yes. So, but the Izni or Tuhiyal Mauta, but it's the Izni. Or Ibrahim Allah Nabi wa alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam was very, very special. You know, by passage of time, you just realize greatness of Ibrahim alayhi salam more and more. This is a person that we all owe to him. A lot, and <laughs> we cannot think of what could be humanity without Ibrahim alayhi salam. Just the minimum is that if you had no Ibrahim, all the prophets, all imams, all Sayyids, all you know, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, you know, prophets were not there. 
all of them are zurri of Ibrahim ala nabiyyana wa alihi wa sallam add to it his teaching his great example of tawheed we owe to him a lot so Ibrahim alayhi salam was very interested in seeing beyond the whale, seeing Malakut, the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi arni Malakut as samawati wal ard. Yeah? Sometimes our dreams are to see this country or that country. <laughs> but Ibrahim's dream was <laughs> to see Malakut. To understand what happens in that side of the universe, one of the things that he wanted to know was how Allah gives life to the dead. Rabbi Arani Kaifa Tuhiel Mota. Please show me how you revive the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understood what Ibrahim means. Ibrahim didn't just say, I want to see how you do this. He said, I want you to show me how you do it by making me do it. You know, sometimes I say, you know, how you drive this car? You say, you know, stand here. Then you go and, you know, drive. <laughs> okay, I saw how you drive the car, but I didn't experience. <laughs> Allah didn't say, you know, stand here, I show you how I do it. Allah made Ibrahim able to revive. This is the way Allah teaches. <laughs> Take four birds. You uh, put, combine them and put mixture of these four, a little on this hill, a little on that. So completely mixed. You call them. But this call is different. If you and I call them one million times, nothing happens. <laughs> because they cannot even hear what we say. This dua is dua of someone who can say kun fayakun. So Allah made Ibrahim able to call them and by calling them, he's giving them life. Like for example, I look at for example that corner and I say, I want apples on the trees. There is no tree, but by saying apple on the trees, there would be trees and apples. This is the power of Erada, yeah? the power of Vid. Inshallah in heaven is like this. Yeah? Whatever you want, Fihama Tashtahiel and Fus. Whatever you want, it will be there. But in dunya, some people have this power, Be'iznillah. And this is Hadith Qudsi. Abdi Ati'ni Aj'alka Mathali. My servant, obey me, I will make you. Mathali, not misli. No misli. No similar. Mathali. Uh, an example. One of the things that what whenever I want something, I say kun fa yakun. I make you able to say kun fa yakun. Ana hayyun la amut aj'alka hayyan la tamut. Ana ghaniyun la aftaqir aj'alka ghaniyan la taftaqir. So Ibrahim alayhi salam bi'iznillah called them thumma du'uhunna ya'teena ka sa'ya. This is very interesting. 
when he calls them biiznillah they don't take time and you know like someone who's asleep he is waking up you know takes time to warm up they quickly come to you <laughs> as if they were waiting for him to call you see the power so what Allah did to Ibrahim just showed him no Allah made him able to do it by himself so Allah Tabatabai says the question was not show me the way deads are revived the question was show me how you do it there was emphasis on you do it and Allah made him so life can come only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he may give power to someone like Isa alayhi salam like Ibrahim alayhi salam to give life and this is what we call wilayat <laughs> takwini if, if someone says you know why you believe in wilayat takwini say this is wilayat takwini we have to believe in the Quran this is the wilaya which is not a matter of tashri it's not a matter of legislation or guidance the matter of playing a role in the <coughs> creation bi'iznillah of course what is the role of father mother what is the role of a gardener who plants the seeds they are just preparing their role is preparation they are just instruments and channels but life comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not that gardener gives life or parents give life. Allah gives life, but Allah uses asbab. Allah uses causes. If he doesn't want, he can do it without cause. Like Adam alayhi <laughs> salam. Yeah? Adam didn't have father or mother. Bada'a khalqa al-insana min teen. Yeah, so with the case of Adam was direct from the soil. But then we should have father and mother and you know sperm these things. But no matter whether it's like Adam or it's like his progeny, life comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else. And it's only Allah who can take away the life and therefore when you want to play a role in Allah's act of giving life you must consider his Sharia you cannot you know have any relations you know a child comes Allah gives life to this child <laughs> yes Allah gives life to this child but you must go according to the way that he has prescribed like for example i cannot plant a flower in someone else's garden and say allah gives life yes allah gives life but he says you are responsible you must do everything as i tell you this is very sacred act to contribute to existence of a human being is very sacred no one can say, just, you know, it happened. How can this just happen? Something so sacred, so important. Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. My last point. For planting trees, like date trees, he was making wudu, planting this tree or sapling in a halal, tayyib soil. And then for every sapling or every seed he was planting, making two rak asalat.
Then how can someone has a child just happen? It, it's impossible. The great responsibility. Rasulullah for having Lady Fatima for 40 days went to Qara Hira. <laughs> then someone like Fatima comes. So life is very sacred in Islam. Any form of life is very sacred, but especially human life. And inshallah, we will continue discussion inshallah. in the coming nights. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to understand his book and act upon his book, the Holy Quran. We want this month to be a month of renewing our relation with the Quran. And we request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Quran and Ahlul Bayt our Shufa'a on the Day of Judgment. Amin Ya Rabbal Alamin.